Hello nurses, this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com and these are my scribble notes on nursing in the NCLEX. And today's focus is on, oops, this sticky note called uh, calcium glycosides, digoxin, in K2 band D A V. You can follow me on Instagram, it's available on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, Etsy, and on nursingcamp.com. Okay, let's go and let's nurse on. Okay, K2 band AV. Previously, I mentioned in a previous lecture, we covered the A, B, C, C, D, E medications. And this is the, the fourth portion. This is calcium glycosides or digoxin or linoxin. <clears throat> now, the interesting thing about this is, according to this order of priority, and if you haven't seen this, look at the priority listing, it's important to note that when a patient's on digoxin, we look up and we look at, are they on a calcium channel blocker? And previously in my lecture, I talked about calcium channel blockers, and the issue is, is that if they're on a calcium channel blockers like DV, which is diltiazem and verapamil, and you place them on digoxin, and their heart rate goes down, um, which one is it? Is it the digoxin or the diltiazem or the verapamil? And that's why we generally will question that order and really evaluate that patient in their, um, in their medications for the NCLEX. Okay. All right, so the mnemonic for this is um, K2 BNAV. Now, calcium glycosides, generally, if you see calcium glycosides, the first thing you question is, is that, you know, what's the level? And the level is generally um, 0.8 to 2.0. Now, also, it's a chronic medication, more so because it requires a level. It's given for atrial flutter, uh, CHF patients, and AFib. So when we talked about that, you know, AFib doesn't have a P wave. And because they don't have a P wave, their SA node isn't firing. So it can't get to the AV. And so what happens is you get all these kind of um, impulses and what happens you can't get Stallings law so you need cardiac output so digoxin is very good for this because it gives it's inotropic and inotropic means that it's gonna increase the force I know the force of contraction so it's increase the force and help with ejection fraction or output of blood okay so K2 band AV so K2 band a, V. Now, these are all the reasons that a person will be um, usually tested on with digoxin. And when we're looking at it, we look at um, electrolytes. And with electrolytes at first, we look at potassium. And we worry about potassium low. And if it is low, um, they can get dig toxic. And dig toxicity. Um, is problematic, which means that that's why we monitor for uh, bradycardia and um, blood pressure. And if they're ditch toxic, they're going to need something like digibind um, to correct that ditch toxicity because it is a level medication. And when you have level medications, you need to um, you can't just get rid of it so quickly because it has to. It takes time to get that blood level up in the um, minimum of therapeutic level. Now, <clears throat> two is the uh, level, which we talked about before, right? So we said two was the max level um, for digoxin. B, bradycardia. We monitor for bradycardia, so we'll do the apical pulse. And if that's less than 60, we hold that medication generally. Um, because it's also... Um, a uh, chronotropic, which means that chronos is time, um, like chronos guard, like you know your punch clocks. The time they're called chronos. And what they're talking about is that time. Um, it slows the, slows the heart rate down. Okay. Uh, anorexia is the next one. Anorexia. Let me get rid of this. Anorexia. Um, is a sign that they're toxic. So you see digoxin in questions, and you see anorexia. Anorexia, I mean that, you know, the person isn't hungry. They don't want to eat. Now, if they're not hungry and they don't want to eat, you don't give them 
a list of foods they might like. It's really telling you that they're ditch toxic and you need to um, assess that patient and check a level because they're ditch toxic. Nausea comes later. That's problematic because anorexia comes first and then nausea because they're starting their levels increasing to two. Um, doctor needs to be notified whenever a patient is uh, ditch toxic and uh, nausea. Um, dysrhythmias and diarrhea comes with this. Um, not most likely, but it is, does show up. Um, abdominal pain. Now, abdominal pain is very interesting. This is a late sign. This means that you, the, the boat is here and is on its way out. And what I mean by po boat, I mean, well, seeing the boat means that there's a problem coming. And when you have a problem coming, that's seeing the boat coming. Okay, So in this case, the boat coming would be the uh, anorexia. Right? So the anorexia is the first sign you start to see, hey, you know what? There's a problem coming. and um, But when you see abdominal pain, well, the boat's here, and there's definitely a problem, and this is, the boat's on fire, and there's a problem, and it's going to sink. Okay. Um, last one is visual halos, V for visual halos. And that's, they see they have these lights around the halo. So what they see is they see this kind of um, yellow yellowish light. Um, obviously, it didn't work, right? So they see these yellow halos around their um, lights. That means they're ditch toxic, toxic, and there's a problem. Um, <clears throat> what else? So let's run through it. So we have A whales, right? So we'll look at digoxin and A whales. And A whales is a method I use to identify um, what I might be missing in teaching or in studying this content. So first question is, is it acute or is it chronic? Well, digoxin is a chronic medication that has acute toxic levels. Um, and that levels, when we talked about, was K2 band AV, right? So K2 band AV. Now, we said the level is 2, but this is interesting, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So the level is 0 0.822. So a dig level is that. And so K2 band AV is 8 letters, and it's 0 0.8. Kind of neat. All right, so... Um, it's, a, it's chronic, but there is acute findings. Next thing is, is how does it work? Well, we talked about that. It's a calcium glycosuride. So actually, it uh, doesn't really, um, it helps with contraction, and it helps pump the heart. And that's great for CHF patients um, and patients who have problems with rhythm problems, like hyperactive rhythms, AFib, and so on. Um, when do we hold it? Well, heart rate uh, less than 60, systolic less than 90, um, follow your agency policy. Also, you hold it for signs and symptoms of ditch toxicity, uh, anorexia, nausea, diarrhea, dysrhythmias, abdominal pain, visual halos. What's the assessment? Well, vital signs are first, and then do they have all these reporting symptoms? Uh, are there any labs associated to it? Yeah, um, potassium, low potassium. So you'll be monitoring their potassium. But more importantly, when you're looking at potassium, you're monitoring um, are they on something like sp uh, spanolactone, which is spare the potassium, which is good. It keeps potassium up. Patient on digoxin and Lasix, that's a problem because Lasix is going to decrease the potassium and then it re causes ditch toxicity. And Bumex is worse because Bumex is, uh, Bumex is, uh, you tur tilt that, that's four times Lasix. Um, that's also very bad because that will decrease the potassium. Um, eating, anything to worry about, maybe uh, if they're on Lasix and digoxin, maybe potassium might be an issue. Um, eating, if they start to get anorexic, they don't want to eat, that's a problem. And the last thing, what stands out? Well, what stands out is K2 band AV and this, um, this medication and understanding what those things are.
My name is Nursing Camp. Uh, you can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest. I also have my books on Etsy, as well as if you join nursingcamp.com, you're able to uh, have free downloads. But most of my stuff is free on Pinterest. So I'll see you next time. Welcome and nurse on and have a good day. Bye.